In this video, we'll check out the limited edition GRS Super Joystick Ikari Warriors Edition. Yes, that's a mouthful from Glenn's Retro Show. Glenn and I have been good friends for a number of years, and he did send this kit over for an early review and to assist in testing. I want to express a huge thanks to Glenn for the opportunity to check it out. In case you're not already familiar, the game Akari Warriors has a very unique control scheme, and the stick you'll see in this video are meant to allow playing the game as it was originally intended. That is, you move the stick in all directions, and you can also rotate it at the top, left or right, to allow the character to turn. And with that, I'm John, and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. There are a lot of things pretty cool about this product. The joystick, for one, is very unique, and the fact that you can use the box it ships in, either as a template to build your own control panel, or the box itself. It's very sturdy. Coming from Glenn, it has his signature plastic bag for storing it when not in use. <laughs> uh, Glenn uses these for everything. This product is called the GRS Super Joystick and has many other unique features. It's officially licensed by SNK and provides a unique controller that allows playing games that would be very difficult or impossible otherwise. One of the first thing I noticed after removing the sleeve is that the holes for the buttons and the stick are perforated. You pop them out and mount the joystick and buttons to the box. The included manual is nearly 40 pages and has a ton of helpful information from the assembly to setting up the emulators. It includes mounting hardware that can be used in an arcade cabinet and wiring for up to 12 gamepad buttons, though six come with the kit. There are cable ties, a calibration PCB, a USB-C 90 degree to USB Type-A cable, a calibration cable, a mode way switch button that we'll discuss in a few moments, the joystick assembly itself, and the stick also operates as a push-pull stick which is pretty neat. The end of the stick is interchangeable with any of the four included adapters that set the rotary feature of the stick. The joystick base includes the encoder logic and connectors for 18-pin I.O., 5-pin input, 6-pin POV head inputs for the calibration PCB, and USB-C for power and data. There are two restrictor gates and, of course, six gold leaf push buttons. Now I realize it may look like a complex kit, but the assembly actually goes fairly quick. Now we'll move on to the GRS Super Joystick Assembly. You don't have to use the box for your control panel, but in this video I will. I found it easier to use a sharp object to help pop out the perforated pieces from the top down to avoid tearing. At that point, just remove the nuts on the back of the buttons and pop them in and screw the nut on on the opposite side. One minor point here, I did line up all the buttons such that the negative pole was on the same side consistently across all buttons. This will make it easier to minimize mistakes when connecting the wires. I then did the same for the mode plus way button, which we'll discuss more about in a bit. From here, I just used the four large screws with a washer and mounted the base of the stick such that the connectors are pointed towards the side of the box. You may find it easier to attach the cables before screwing everything in tightly. I didn't hear, but just a thought. It might make things a little bit easier. Then of course, tighten everything up, insert the connector attached to the super joystick through the base, twist the stick until everything seats properly, then at the back, push in and twist to lock the stick into place. Take the connector for the stick and plug it into the far left port as shown here. Be sure and push it in, very good. Remove the ties holding the wiring harness. Then plug in the harness into the port labeled J2. Make sure the connector is firmly seated into place. Then plug the white connector from the harness cable into the mode way button. Starting from the end of the black wire or ground closest to the stick, begin snapping in the wires to the negative terminals on each of the buttons. Keep in mind you will have six left over when you're done. In this early kit, the wires weren't labeled, but yours will be according to Glenn. So I separated the wires that I needed for the six buttons on the left 
and then just went by the color chart in the manual to wire each of them up. The main point here is to figure out which one you want as your A button or button 1 input. Start there and then connect each according to the color or label. And here's something you almost never see me do in a video and that's cable management. <laughs> uh, yeah, if it wasn't for the fact that there were some cable ties included, I likely would have skipped this step. Uh, at this point, all we need to do is route the 90 degree USB-C cable through the box holes and attach it to the USB-C port on the Super Joystick. Close up the box and we're done with the assembly. Now we'll check out some of the features and games. In this video, we'll check out the GRS Super Joystick with the SNK 40th Anniversary Collection, playing a handful of games, as well as MAME in Retrobat on a Windows 11 PC. If you need a full setup guide for Retrobat, check out the link above, which should be helpful. I installed both Retrobat and the games to this 5TB drive in that video, and we'll be using it for this one. You aren't at all limited to a PC. You can also use single board computers such as the Raspberry Pi, and the manual explains the setup for many of them. If you'd like to see more in the future on other setups, please let me know in the comments below. If you do, or even if you don't have plans to purchase the kit shown here, you may find it helpful that if you have an Amazon Prime account, there are many games that you can download and play for free on your PC. Visit gaming.amazon.com and there you'll find many games that you can claim. And for the next 68 days from this recording, SNK 40th Anniversary is one of them. Just click the link to claim it and install the Amazon Gaming application to install the full game. I'm likely the world's worst at demonstrating how to actually play the game, uh, but there was virtually no setup involved. I think I did remap the buttons for shooting and the grenade, but that was about it. Here's a brief look at some of the gameplay for the SNK 40th edition. As you can see, the rotary function of the stick allows you to shoot in various directions and seems to work well. Of course, you can play other games that don't utilize the rotational feature, such as Alpha Mission. You can easily swap out the rotary knobs, such as the free spinning top, which will change the rotational aspects of the joystick, such as the 16 position, 8 position, or free position. To replace the knob, locate the small notch in the cover, use a small screwdriver or your fingernail to pop it off, remove the screw, insert a different knob, replace the screw and cover, and here we have a free turning spinner. By the time you receive your kit, there will be a new firmware available that will allow you to use the stick as a spinner for games such as Tempest and Arkanoid. I've now swapped back to the 12-way knob and have the way button set for mouse mode. If we take a look at it in Windows, you can see the mouse cursor move as the stick is rotated. While we're discussing the features, let's also cover the mode and way button. This single button has two different features. If you press and hold the mode side of the button for about three seconds, it will change the mode and color of the button. The options include blue for POV hat mode, green for keystroke mode, and red for mouse mode. The way side of the button allows you to change the lighting pattern. For example, press and hold for about 3 seconds for constantly lit 8-way, blinking for 12-way, or fading for 16, depending on your preferred setting. One feature that I discussed with Glenn that I'd personally like to see is a way to use the mode plus way button as the select and start. I think this would be a great extended use for this button 
and it would require a firmware update to allow it. Now we'll switch over to MAME within Retrobat. I'll plug in the 5TB external drive and launch the Retrobat executable. From here, you'll map the buttons exactly as was discussed in the Retrobat guide for the GRS Super Joystick and Buttons. Then select the game, press and hold the A button to enter the menu, and select Advanced Game Options. I selected the Libretro MAME 2016 emulator, launch the game, and press Tab on the keyboard to enter the MAME configuration. Select Input, This Machine, move down to Positional Analog, press Enter, and then the Escape key to clear it. Then select Positional Analog Deck, press Enter, and then turn the stick counterclockwise. Then do the same for Positional Analog Ink, but turn it clockwise instead. Press the Escape key to go up a level and select Analog Controls. From here, set the Positional Digital Speed to zero, and the positional sensitivity to 100. Once done, press the escape key out of the menu to return back to the game. At this point, you can jump in and begin playing. We've reached the end of another video. I hope you enjoyed this look at the GRS Super Joystick. I think Glenn's Retro Show and T-Sticks have done an impressive job with this stick, and I'm sure there are a lot of folks that will appreciate the new options of this unique joystick and solution. There are a few firmware enhancements that we discussed that, if implemented, would make it even more useful. I would again like to thank Glenn for sending this unit over for review. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, please click the like button. If you haven't already subscribed, I hope you'll consider doing so. And with that, I look forward to talking with you again very soon.